God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you as you're coming on. Hallelujah. Just begin to swipe and invite. God bless you, Alicia. God bless you, Sharice. God bless you, Matthew, son. Come on and share it. Share it and tell someone. Uh, as you're coming on, just begin to declare push. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yes, you did. You caught me. Come on, as you're coming on, just begin to declare push. Hallelujah. God bless you, Glory McMiller. God bless you, Tequan. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Tiffany. Come on, press those hearts. God bless you, Priscilla. Come on, somebody declare push. Come on, I want you to write it. God bless you. I love you, my brig. Come on, I want you to write it push. God bless you to each and every one of you. Tonight, we're going to we're gonna uh, mention the major announcement, but I want you to declare push. Come on, I want you to declare it, and I want you to tag someone as you're coming on. Declare push. God bless you, Prophet Apostle William Johnson. Come on, somebody declare push. Come on, declare it in this room. Come on, God bless you to my husband. I see you, Sandrika. Come on, there are not enough of you saying it. And the times we are living in, come on, I want you to tag somebody and say, don't quit. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Come on, quickly invite, share and tag. I want to release the word of the Lord that God has given me. Come on, unto the nation. Tonight, there is a move from the Lord that's about to take place in this room. Hallelujah. Come on, we're declaring push. Somebody declare push. Come on, declare push. Come on, as you're saying it. Come on, as you're releasing it, come on, I want you to declare, I will not quit. Come on, God bless you, Keith Turner. God bless you, Shanita. Come on, tag somebody and declare push. Come on, declare push, and I will not quit. Come on, as the Lord began to deal with me regarding our nation, there has been a significance of attacks concerning the mental warfare of the church. Come on, the mental warfare of believers. Come on, God bless you, Brittany. Come on, I want you to declare it, push. I want you to swipe and invite and tell someone to push. Come on, as the Lord began to deal with me, he began to say to me, he began to deal with me about the minds of God's people. We are literally living in a time where there is a lack of fear of God. There is a lack of the reverence of God and there is a lack of sanctity and honor in the pews and the pulpit. Come on, somebody declare it, push. Come on, I want you to declare push. As I begin to come on live and the Lord begin to deal with me, he be, God bless you, Dr. Claudette. He began to say to me, very simple, come on, there are not enough of you speaking and tagging someone. He began to say to me, he said this, he said, I need you to speak to my people about being in a place of position, about being in a place of destiny, about being in a place of position. And as God began to deal with me, he began to deal with me about our nation, that there are many people that are straying away from the ordinances of God. I want you to declare push. There's not enough of you tagging. I want you to declare push. And I want you to declare I cannot quit. There is an attack on the minds of many believers. And the attack on the minds of believers, it has you in a place where you're feeling like, God, I'm doing everything you're asking me to do. I'm prophesying. I'm doing everything that you declare me to do, but there is still a mental warfare that is happening on the inside of me. And as God began to deal with me about our nation, he said, you're going to see, Sarah, where there will be a decline of intercession. He said, you're going to see a decline, come on, a revival. You're going to see a decline. The internet's trying to act up, but we're still going to persevere. Somebody say, I'm going to push. Come on, there is a strong declaration. Come on, a pushing in the room. I want you to tag somebody and tell them tonight that we're pushing through the atmosphere. Come on, the Lord began to deal with me and he said to me, he said there was a mental attack against the remnant. And let me break it down to you what I mean by the mental attack of the remnant. See, the Lord began to show me. He said many of you are getting in a 
place where you're telling God, I am exhausted, where you're feeling like I've done everything that I could have done, but I am not seeing the results of what God has told me. And as a result, there are many people who are walking away from God. They are walking away from the church. They are walking away from leadership because the pews have become perverted. Come on, this thing is very weighty. I want you to hear what he said to me. He said the pews have become a place of perversion. He said in the pulpit has become a place of games and mockery. Come on, somebody declare. And the Lord said to me, he said, I'm coming like a batting ram. He said, and what I'm doing is, he said, I'm purifying the pew and the altar. He said, and I'm ushering in a wave of judgment. We are going to see a greater increase. Come on, in death, we are going to see in the land where there will be many who will begin to drop out. Come on, it's a major attack against the minds of God's people. If you know anyone that is in the remnant, I want you to tag them tonight because I want to release what God has said. He said to me, simply, he said to me, I want to read my notes of what he said. He said, many are pushing. He said, but they are losing faith in me. He said, and why they're losing faith is because they have trusted in the vain prophecies and the vain magical words of man. There is a great pollution in the prophetic that we are seeing inside of the earth. He said, and what they're doing is, he said, they're telling my people lies. They're telling them what they desire to hear. It's called soulless realm prophecy, where they are ministering to the soul and they are not ministering salvation. I want you to hear me, people of God, because the Lord declares in this hour that if you do not get in a place when you're positioned for prayer, when you're positioned for revival, you're not going to last. You're not going to make it. Come on, Bata Katoria, Maria Katoria Antaya, Masuria Telepiantaya. Somebody declare break. Come on, man. oh, this thing is very weighty. I want you to hear me in my spirit and see what is happening is. There was a lot of domination and manipulation from the pulpit and in the pews and many of you are feeling the effects of the enemy's assignment on the mind of your mental on your mental where you're feeling God you know God but then at the same time you're saying God I cannot take this God I feel like quitting God, I feel like retreating backwards. And he said to me, he said, for I'm coming, Sarah, like a batting ram. He said, and I shall come. He said, and I shall judge the righteous from the unrighteous. Come on, there's nobody saying nothing because the line of holiness has become so tampered with. The line of sanctification has become so dim that you can't tell the difference between what is sanctified and what is pure? Y'all not saying nothing to me. There's not enough people saying nothing. Come on. He said to me, he said, but I come. He said, and the vain words of man that prophesy to their flesh, they're telling them what they desire to hear. And as a result, when false prophecy and divination by the words come on telling you what you want to hear, and when it doesn't come to pass, your heart becomes hardened against God. And you begin to feel as though, Pastor April, that God has abandoned you. When God has not abandoned you, but you have fallen in love with a divination that has been loose in the mouth of many prophets. He said, because you desire to worship them, I will lose confusion in their mouths. People are going so far away from the sanctity of God, where they're merchandising the prophetic of the Lord, where they have lost their conviction. Come on, I'm talking to a church. The Lord said to me, he said, I need you to begin to open your mouth. He said, and when when you open your mouth, it will be like a fire and a knife in the spirit where you will cut the very foreskin off of their flesh. You're not hearing me in the spirit. There are some of you that got to hear this message.
message tonight. He said, I'm calling them Elder Sharon back to the intimate place with me. He said, I'm calling them back to the place. He said, I'm coming like a batting ram. He said, and I come to reposition my people. He said to me, he said, Sarah, as I was planning the conference, he said to me, this conference, it's not about names. This conference, it's not about personalities. He said, but I want my people to begin to reposition themselves back to the place of my presence. Now watch this. He said to me, he said, I'm, I've come to reposition you. He said, not design for popularity. He said, but divinely causing them to seek after me. See, messages like this, we don't want to hear. But we want somebody to tell us that it, we, we, we're going to get a car. We're going to get a house. We're going to get our mortgage paid. And we're looking at God as if he's a genie in a bottle. Rather than our, you're not hearing me. I wish there was a generation that was more interested in purification than they were popularity. See, you're not hearing me. I wish there was a generation that said, Pastor, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in a name. I'm interested, Pastor Hassan, in the presence of God. So the Lord began to deal with me and he said, he said, there is a mental attack against those that are standing in holiness and righteousness and see what is happening is. He said, if you're not careful, it's designed to take your mind out. He said, there must be an increase in intercession like we have never seen. We must begin to turn over our plates and get in a place of prayer like we've never seen. Because if we do not, it will take your mind out. Y'all, let me read this thing. And the Lord said, watch this. I got to get this thing out my spirit. Let me help you. He said to me, he said, and what it's designed to do, it's designed to wear the righteous out, which means that you'll begin to feel like you're lethargic. You feel like quitting. You feel like walking away. You feel like what's the use? Nobody doesn't care. Nobody cares that I'm crying loud and sparing not. The book of Jeremiah says, you prophesy to the people. And their wounds, come on, they're not healed. But you're giving them the necessities of what makes them feel good enough for the moment, but does not transform them to destiny. Woo. I cannot tell you how many conferences that I've been to that though, the, though we have gathered great numbers, there is a lack of a presence and the reverence of God. For people are building egos. They are building their images. The Lord said, but towel, somebody declare it, but towel of Babel is right in the kingdom. And he says, it's coming down. He says, and I shall come through my remnant. He says, and I, oh God, see many of us are not, come on, come on, where are you today? Where are the remnant of believers that say, pastor, I I am one of those that I'm standing and I'm crying loud on the backside of the mountain. As we were beginning to pray, I saw the eyes of an eagle. And as I saw the eyes of the eagle, he said to me, he said, I'm sharpening your eyesight. He said, I'm sharpening your foresight. He said, and what's going to happen is, he said, you're going to begin to see like you've never seen before. Come on. He says, he said to me, he said, and you will bring back intercession into my house. You will bring back purity for they have merchandise the true anointing he said who is using who is God using you or are you using God 
Sande, Le Candele Besuri and Daya, Le Mansori and Daya, Marian de Lebecuri and De. See, hear the word of the Lord and the warning of God today. He says, I'm coming for the church. I'm coming for what y'all call the church. He says, I'm coming for leaders that are in places of position. And instead of you bringing people to my altar, but you have turned my house, come on, into a den of thieves. You've turned it. You've turned sons and daughters against one another. He said, but I'm coming and I'm coming to judge. He said, I'm coming to judge the house of the Lord first. Who is the house of the Lord? He said, you. Oh, y'all don't want to. Oh, God. He said, I'm coming. He said, and I'm coming to judge. He said, I'm coming to judge. He said, and when I come to judge, he said, it will not be funny. He said, it will not be easy. And the Lord began to deal with me. And I want to read this according to number 16. He said, and Moses spoke to the Israelites. He said, get 12 staffs from them. One from the leader of each tribe. He said, and place them. In the tent of the meeting, come on, in front of the ark, come on, of the covenant on and, 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 and Andrian. And he said, where I will meet you. He said, y'all not hearing me. And there's a lot of people that are not going to say nothing. But I'm telling you, he says, judgment is coming from the house of the Lord. Jellyback preachers. Come on, we're people. We don't want to preach sound doctrine anymore. It's now more about a dollar than it is about your soul. Come on. And as I was reading this, watch this. In number 17, he said to me, he said, understand, I gave Moses specific instructions. Somebody say, he's given you instructions. He's given you divine instructions. Come on. He says, I'm giving the remnant. He said, divine instructions. Come on. We get ready to deal with what the enemy is targeting the righteous. I'm trying to help you with all of these Pharaoh leaders. I'm talking about leaders. Oh God. These, y'all not hearing me. I'm talking about, we're getting ready to see churches be exposed that have indulged in cultalism, that have indulged in sleeping with boys. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. See, this thing, this thing is getting ready to get real. It's getting ready to get real. He says, I'm coming like a batting ram. He says, I'm getting ready to interrupt their stuff. He says, and what is about to be exposed? He said, y'all not hearing me. See, Pharaoh reigned for a certain amount of time before the Lord called his card. There is a set time for the unrighteous to reign. Hear me, people of God. Hear me, remnant of God. Do not quit. Do not walk away. See, let me tell you what the devil does. He begins to work. See, what Symbolith and Tobiah, they figured, I can't stop you, but I can wear your mind down. I can wear your mental capacity down by damaging you by my words and getting you to the place where you will become exhausted. But Nehemiah said, I'm not going to let you get in my spirit. I'm not going to let you get in my mind. Y'all got to hear me in the Holy Ghost. The game of the wicked is to get in your mind. Because if they can get in your mind, they can get in your heart. And once they get in your heart, they will sink your soul. See, when they kept going, when they kept going, Adriana, to Nehemiah, they kept on saying. See, the Lord said, y'all don't understand. He said, I'm getting ready to deal with it. Marriages marriages, husbands that have walked out of homes all for platforms and popularity, husbands that have forsaken their children all in the name of a brand, all in the name of an image. He said I'm getting ready to deal with it. He said I'm pulling the carpet and I'm pulling the card on the unrighteous and David began to cry out and David said God he said I feel like the wicked is winning. I 
feel like I'm doing all this intercession. I'm doing all of this prayer. I'm doing all of this prophesy. But where are you? You're not hearing me on my spirit. Come on, Jeremiah was getting upset with God. He said, God, I don't understand. He said, I've done what you've asked me to do. I've done what you prophesied over my life. He said, but yet I don't hear and I don't see what you've said. And there are many of you tonight where you're at the place of being burned out. But the Lord says, I need you to be still because there was a time for Pharaoh's cart to be pulled. See, in, in the middle of a famine, in the book of Genesis, you realize that Pharaoh is in a place, a position of authority. But then when you look in the chapters down the line, Pharaoh's card is being pulled. See, there is a time slot to everything wicked. There is a time slot to everything unrighteous. There is a time slot to every wicked thing that is done in the dark. He said, oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me in the spirit. You're not hearing me in the Holy Ghost. You're not hearing me. But job of the enemy, I can feel it as I'm sleeping. I can feel it as I'm in my bed. There are people that are truly seeking God. They truly want the Lord. And when they come in the house of God, they're not experiencing God. They're experiencing witchcraft, abuse in the pews, abuse in the pulpit. Blood is leaking everywhere. But the Lord told me tonight, he said, I'm coming like a batting ram. I'm coming like a batting ram. And I as I laid back in the 44 days of prayer, I saw an ox and he said to me, he said, I'm girding them up with just like an ox. See, when you talk about the faces of God, you hear about the eagle, you hear about the lion of Judah, but nobody teaches you about the anointing of the ox. An ox is able to bear the yoke of Christ. And the Lord said to tell you, oh, he said do not quit do not burn out do not walk away I'm getting ready to pull the carpet he said I'm getting ready to do it he said I'm getting ready I'm getting ready to pull the carpet you're not hearing me you're not hearing me in the spirit you're gonna hear me in the spirit he said, he said to me, he said about Cassandra, there are people that are saying, I love God, but I can't do people. I can't do it no more. And the Lord said to tell you tonight, he said, you cannot afford to quit. You cannot afford to walk away. He said, you can't afford, you can't afford it. And hear me very clearly as I was, you're not hearing me. He said, the wicked shall be cut down. I, I, I got to get this scripture because I got to read this thing. He said, the wicked shall be cut down. I, I'm talking to a generation of the remnant. Tammy, I'm talking to a generation that says, I can't take it no more. But ox, when you put a yoke on an ox, an ox is able to bear what other, other animals cannot bear. An ox is made to, to re-bear. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, gotta hear me in the spirit. They're, they're able to bear. They're able to bear the weight of it. And David said, David said, the wicked shall be cut off. They shall be, they will soon fade away. And let me help you. Why, why was he said right here? Somebody get me that scripture, Proverbs. Proverbs 2, somebody get it. I gotta read this thing in the spirit for them. I gotta read it because you gotta hear the revelation of this. You gotta hear this thing in the spirit. You gotta hear it, Proverbs. Come on, hand it to me. Let me read what God is saying to y'all. He says here, I think this is it. He says here, but the wicked, but the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be uprooted. Find me the scripture when it says, come on, he said, but the wicked will be removed. He said from the land and the treacherous, come on, will be uprooted. Hear me, people of God. They were making a mockery. Hear me. 
They were making a mockery of Jeremiah. They were laughing at David. They said, where is your God? Where is, the, where is your God? You said your God would defend you. You said your God would save you. you she said, take your time. You said your God would deliver you. Where is your God? Where is what? Where's your God that you claim was going to be a defender of you? Come on. Thank you, honey. It says here. Oh, he got it already. Come on. Come on. He, they were laughing. They were making jokes. Come on. And the Lord wants me to let some of you know that there are many people that are waiting for your demise. They are waiting for your downfall. Nehemiah stood on the wall and they came with their false words. Y'all got to hear me in the spirit. It says it right here in the text. In the book of Nehemiah. And even as my, come on, they were waiting for them to fail. But Nehemiah said, he said, I cannot come down. He said, because I have a great work. They were trying to wear his mind out. Somebody declare it. The devil will not wear me out. And those that are on assignment, those that are on satanic assignment, the Lord declares in this hour, he says, your weapon will be prayer and silence. He said, your weapon will be your position. Your weapon will be position. Your weapon will be your position against the enemy. Hear me in the spirit. It was Nehemiah's position of the heart that qualified him for promotion. It was Joseph's position towards his wife. Towards that woman that was saying that she raped him. That saved his life. Somebody say it's about your position. It's about your posture. It's about your position and your posture. Pat, come on. But devil will not wear me out. The Lord says I'm pulling the carpet. Please believers of God. Do not believe for one second. That the unrighteous is getting away. They will be judged. He says, judgment is coming to my house. Oh, yes, it is. He says, judgment is coming. And the Lord showed me something. He, oh God, you're not hearing me. And, and the judgment that he said, my judgment is coming like a batting ram. They're coming like a batting ram. He says that in this hour, he said, I need you to be careful of how you respond to those who have dropped you, misused you. Come on, counted you out. Come on and overlooked you and buried you. He said, watch your response and your position. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to fight for you. He said, and I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Come on. He says, and I'm anointing your head with all. He said, and surely and goodness and mercy. Come on, it's going to follow you all the days of your life. He said, they will be greatly disappointed. And as the Lord began to deal with me, he said, and I'm opening up streams of rivers. He said, Sundia. He said, I'm opening up streams of rivers. He said, in these rivers, I'm opening from the remnant. He said, they will not be from the resources that will be needed from man. He says, but I will begin to do the work. He said, I will begin to do the work in you. Come on, somebody declare, open up the rivers. Come on, he says, I'm opening up streams. And when Nehemiah was building the wall, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, begin to open up provision. Hallelujah, for the Father says, for those of you, you cannot quit, you cannot give up, you cannot walk away. Come on, you cannot throw in the towel. He says, but I'm reaching my hand out. He says, and know that I'm going to fight for you. For this has been a year when you chose to do it the right way. He said, the right way may be longer. And the right way may be a less scenic route. He said, but watch what I do for you. And it seems as though they are crowning what is unrighteous over righteousness. It seems as though they are crowning what is right unrighteous over righteousness. It seems as though I'm fighting pastor for my sanity. Oh, I'm fighting pastor to keep myself alive. Oh God, I'm fighting to stay in the race, but I, I, I'm losing hope. I'm losing hope. 
Rebecca Sondia. I need answers because if I don't get answers, I'm going to walk away. Who am I talking to tonight? That you've been in a battle and you've been saying, God, I've separated myself. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm asking you what is going on. Why don't I see what you say? Oh, Shatamandori Anaya. Mariandori, say, I'm talking to some. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking. There's only. See, not a lot of people are going to connect with this word. Not a lot of people are going to hear this. But I'm talking about pastors and leaders and those in the pews that you are really in the trenches of the church. You're in the dirtiness with your hands, doctor. And you're saying to the Lord, I'm in the fight of my life. And I need, I need, I need about Sondi and Abaha. Rosa, I need an answer because this don't make no sense. This right here don't add up. Dora Mandoria, Mary Andora. But he says to tell the remnant tonight, keep fighting. Barakatoria. He says, keep fighting. He says, because he, he, I asked God for an answer for his people and he said to me he said he gave me an answer he gave me an answer and he said about Sundia he said to me Sarah he said I'm hurting too y'all gotta hear me he said tell them I'm hurting with them they're partaking in how I feel in my suffering he says I'm hurting too he said I tell them that I'm hurting too it grieved him to afflict me that I might learn of him. He said, I'm hurting too, Alicia. I'm hurting too, Shaq Johnson. He says, I'm hurting too. It hurts me to see people use my name. But don't really love me. It hurt, it grieved God to see what Pharaoh was doing to the righteous. It grieved his heart. It grieved the heart of God, what they're doing in Clubhouse. It's grieving the heart of God. He says, I'm grieved. I'm hurting. He says, I'm hurting like you. He says, and that's why I'm looking. That's why you can't quit. Because I need somebody to speak through. I need a vessel to use. I need somebody to tell what I'm feeling in my heart. I need a vessel. I, need, I don't care where you're at. He said, I need to use you. He said, I need a vessel because I'm hurting. He said, I searched for someone that was standing the gap. He looked. He said, He said, I'm looking for somebody that was standing the gap. He said, You can't quit being my mouthpiece. He said, he said, I'm looking for someone that I can use for my glory. I'm looking for someone. He said, you took it like it was you by yourself. He said, but we're in it together. He said, I'm hurting with you. It grieves me. I'm hurting with you. He said, I'm grieved. He said, I'm grieved as your father. I'm looking for somebody. Come on. Y'all, y'all, y'all not telling me y'all don't see what's going on in the church. You telling me that you're not grieved as an intercessor. You telling me that you have not tapped into the heart of God. You telling me that God, people have used God's name to make themselves great. 
people of oh, you're not hearing me you're telling me right now in the realm of a spirit that you cannot you come on you not by yourself. He said, we in this together. Come on, I can remember when I was, I said, you mean to tell me, God, I'm done. I, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I've crossed every I and dot every T. But I need to know, are you with me? Come on. But Lord said, can you not, can he, 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 he said that, that, that it's no longer about Jesus anymore. Uh, Apostle Collins, it's no longer about the Lord's name anymore. I, I gotta speak the truth. I, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't be like the prophet of prophets. It's, and now they're booking people. Y'all can't even see. It's the new modern slavery. You're not building disciples, you're building slave masters. Oh, that time. He says that I'm looking for a remnant of people that will say, I will be the one. Remnant of God, you got to be strong. And by times, we're asking. Jesus was looking and he said, he said, and watch this, in the book of, in the book of Nehemiah, that when you go to the chapter, chapter 13, where's the prophet? I wish he would find my scripture for me, 13. And Nehemiah had built the wall and he had set the priests and different ones in place. And the people made a vow that they would not desecrate the house of God. They made a vow that they would keep the bloodstained banner standing. They told the Lord they would do what was right. But when Nehemiah went to go visit the king, they desecrated the house of God. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that they begin to bring in people. And go look it up for yourself in Nehemiah 13. This man had did all this work. And they came in, I believe it was 13. I believe when you go to 14, they came at 13. Nehemiah was upset because after everything he had done, they came in the house of God and desecrated it. I'm talking about the church. They are running plantations in the church. That's not your spiritual son, that's your slave. Because anytime you do as people say and you override the presence of God, you're not a son, you're a slave, you're still an orphan. Where are the sons of God? Somebody say, I can't be brought. I can't be bought. There's no price tag on me. I cannot be bought. Come on, declare it. I, the Lord says, I'm coming to judge the church. He says, and I'm judging these prophets that are releasing words, seducing words that manipulate your soul for a moment, but never bring you to the transformation power of God. He said, I'm judging the mouths of prophets. He said, Abba Kassondia. He said, and I'm by Kassonde Behe. It says here in Nehemiah 13 and 17, I rebuked the nobles of Judah. And I said to them, what is this wicked thing that you are doing? Desecrating the house of God. He said, did your ancestors do the same thing? So that our God brought all this calamity on us and on this city? Now you're stirring up more wrath against Israel by desecrating the Sabbath. Nehemiah began to deal with them because this man toiled to rebuild the ruins that were broken. And they allowed the unrighteous prophets and priests to come in and desecrate the conferences and desecrate the house of God. He said, I'm coming for the men and the women because it's not just men. I'm talking about women who are secretly marrying their lovers in the house of God and standing up in the holy place. Burning sage and calling it the Lord. 
pastors and me. Now the singers, singers can cuss on Facebook and they can drink and do whatever they want. And if you say something to them, who do you think you are to talk to me like that? Nobody wants nothing said to them anymore. Everybody wants to do whatever they want to do all in the name of Jesus. All in the name of ministry. All in the name of the prophetic. Come on. All in the name of the Lord. Come on. But the Lord says, I'm rebuilding the ruins. I'm rebuilding the places that have been torn down by false prophecy. The false words that have grieved your heart. You, you really sold believing God and it really was not the word of God. But the Lord said, keep fighting. Do not lose heart. Keep fighting and do not lose heart. He said, but this day, he said, I set you ablaze. He said, and I refine your fire. He says, and I reestablish you in the things of me. Nehemiah declared in the scripture, come on, don't leave. He declared, he said, when the shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem, he said, I ordered the doors to be shut and not open. He said, I stationed some of my own men in the gates so that no one could load it. He said, and I begin to clean out the house of God. He says, I'm restoring my remnant. He says, restoration is coming to you. He said, but you cannot faint in the day of adversity. When Nehemiah was building the wall, he had to war and he had to build. For many have gone away from the truth. He said, they have gone away from what the true gospel really is. You cannot allow yourself to be seduced, apostle. Don't allow yourself to be seduced. The temptation is real. They have reduced God's glory down to red bottoms and Gucci and Louis Vuitton. That does not make you blessed. That, that, does, that does not make you prosperous. That does not mean that the Lord is with you. That's not the gospel. They have polluted the marketing arena. There was a time in the house of God where we begin to labor in the house of God. But somebody declare, I will not quit. Come on, the remnant. I came to strengthen the remnant tonight. And I came to tell many of you that are not many, many that are running around here compromising. He says, judgment is coming to the house of God. He said, judgment is coming to the house of God. He says, keep fighting. Keep fighting for me. He said, because we're in it together. He says, keep fighting. Come on, I decree and declare that you will not lose your fight. Come on, I decree and declare you will not lose your fight. Hallelujah, I'm decreeing it. Come on, I will not quit. Come on, he says, my presence is not based upon prominence. Come on, my presence is not based upon prominence, but my presence is birthed process come on he says keep fighting come on I remember when I was in one of the greatest seasons of my life it was one of the most trying times of my life I, come on and I'm by Sakataya come on I prophesy that the rivers are coming I prophesy help is on the way hallelujah I decree and declare over many of you <clears throat> that are in a place a financial struggle how the Lord says he says I'm opening up my provision he says and I'm making ways he said but the sons of Eli shall be judged oh God he said but the sons of Eli shall be judged but sons of Eli shall be judged he said but the sons of Eli shall be judged and many people that are not in this for the true, the true heart of the Father, he says, you're going to see it. 
You're going to know it by way of a spirit. I'm talking about even women. I'm talking about women who everything is about the beauty of how you look. It's about his presence. Come on, it's about his presence and his promise. It's about what he's about to birth through you. And I, I fought with the Lord about the prayer vault. I said, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do any more conferences because it's not about you. He, I said, I don't want to do it. He said, I'm making a clarion call. Hear me. Hear me, people of God in the spirit. He said, this is a clarion call. I want you to hear me. In my son, Denebeke, I'm telling you right now what he said to me. He said, it's a clarion call. He said, it's a summonsing of my elders and my pastors and my leaders. He said, it's a summonsing in the earth. You may have never in your life. Come on. You may have never in your life. Ever in your life. You may never in your life have gotten on a plane. Never in your life been to a conference. Never in your life been in a place of sacrifice. He said to me, it's a summonsing in the earth. He said, it's a summonsing. He said, and when I summons them to come. He said, it will be a refreshing of rivers for my people. Well, they will know what it's like to drink from a pure well. Because you have been drinking from tainted rivers. People that they mix. They got a mixture. Parts of them mean you well. But then the other side does it. Come on. And the Lord told me, he said, I'm dealing with liars in this hour. <laughs> Those that have lied. Those that have had the spirit of Haman upon them. Hallelujah. Haman went and he lied to the king. And he lied. And and he set up a hanging for Mordecai. <laughs> He set up a trap for Mordecai to hang himself. But what he did not know was God had something hidden in the house. See, Esther never revealed that her lineage was that of Jews. Somebody declared, the Lord's going to vindicate me. He's fighting for me. <laughs> Go ahead. He said, I'm fighting for you. You're not getting the revelation tonight. You better catch that. Haman went to the king and sold discord to the king. God said, I'm dealing with the blockers in your life that saw you coming, but went in the air of a leader and tainted your name. So that you would not find favor. But the Lord says, I'm fighting for you. Oh, yes, I am. But Lord said, I'm going to vindicate you. This is the Bacassonia. This is the Bacassia. And the ditch they dig for you. He said, I'm going to vindicate you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to deal with those that have whispered in the ears of people that have turned leaders against you when they felt the need to sow into your life. And they didn't sow once they got in contact with somebody that was close to them that didn't like them, that didn't like you out of jealousy. He said, I'm going to deal with every Haman. Every Haman. Haman is about to hang. And the noose he had for Mordecai. Do you feel that thing in the spirit? Um, he's cleaning your name. He said, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He said, and they're going to have to honor you in the very same place. They're going to honor you in the very same place. He said, in those same people. He said, I'm bringing it full circle, Apostle Belinda. I'm bringing it full circle. And when he whispered in the king's ear, he thought, Dion, that it 
it was a wrap. That Mordecai was going to die along with the Jews. Am I talking right? But Esther, she, Mordecai went and told Esther what he did. See, and what happened was God allowed Mordecai to hear Haman talking. God said, I'm going to open your ears to their conversations. I'm going to allow you to hear what is being said. To spare you from any further hurt or pain. I'm going to let you hear it. I'm opening your ears tonight. I'm going to let you hear it. I'm going to let you see it. I'm going to let you hear it and see it. But Mordecai didn't allow what he heard, Rosa, to make him bitter. He didn't allow what he heard to make him angry. But he knew who to take it to. He took it to Esther. He could have got mad. But he said, God says, with the information that you're going to get, how will you respond? He didn't take it to blackball him. Y'all better hear the word of the Lord. He said, stand still and let me fight for you. I'm going to defend you. Your family. Mordecai went and he took it to Esther. And Esther, Apostle Drummond. Guess what Esther did? She said, hold up. She realized that she was the lineage of the Jews. Y'all not hearing this thing. You see how God, God set that thing up. And Haman went so far as paying money. They will use their money to pay for the image they want to try to get before. Honey, they will do everything that they can. They will buy influence. They will join coverings that have influential names. They will do everything they can to build where they need to go. To make sure that it proves a point that God is with them. But the Lord said, don't be moved. Don't be moved by it. It's a setup. I love you, sister. God said, don't be moved. Don't be moved by it. Come on, Remnant, say, I'm going to take a stand. Come on. That's another one of my fiery sisters who's a, a preacher of truth. And then watch this, y'all. Y'all got to hear this. And the very thing that Haman had for Mordecai, he ended up being hung on. They're going to hang in the same place that they set up for you. So what am I saying to many of you? Remnant, do not compromise. Do not stop preaching true. Come on, do, come on. Haman's lies were set up, set up his own funeral, creating room for Mordecai. You not, you're not hearing me in the spirit. God made room for Mordecai. Y'all got to take a stand against the unrighteousness that we're seeing. You can't just back up and hide in the corner. You got to be willing to take the risk that I'm going to stand on truth. And not let the unrighteous bully you into a corner. And bully you into a place where your mouth is closed. Where your mouth is no longer saying anything. Come on, you got to allow yourself to open up your mouth. There are some of you that have stopped praying. You've stopped fasting. You told yourself, I'm done with it. I would rather just be in the world where it's quiet and it's safe. But the Lord says, I need you. You are needed. The remnant is needed. I need you to return back to your place of posture. And see what was meant for evil evil against Mordecai. Y'all not hearing me? It turned and Esther was willing to take the risk. She said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see, come on. I'm going to make, I'm going to make mention. She was willing to take the risk. You got to risk. You got to be willing to take the risk. 
that even if I, even if it costs me, that I know that the Lord, come on, you're not hearing me in the spirit. There are some of you that are tempted, come on, to do what the world is doing, to smoke hookah, to smoke marijuana, to, to burn sage, to do the things of the world. Come on, you cannot allow yourself to be bamboozled, sleeping with your pastor, living any kind of old life. You must be willing to take a stand. You must be willing to stand and say, I'm sorry, I cannot be a part. You must be willing. See, because when you get drafted into a cult, it's hard to get out. Because you've come in agreement with that spirit. Esther used her position for God, even if she meant she would die. Righteousness is worth it. Say it. You got to be willing to take the risk. That even if it costs me everything. In the end, I know I'm going to be standing on God. And when you're standing on God, Tanisha, when you're standing on God, Miranda, when you're standing on the Lord, he says, I will be the builder of you. It doesn't matter who it is. He said, I will be the found. Come on. Come on. I will stand. Come on. So we declare today. Come on. We will not allow. Come on. What we see to wear us out. Yes, my lashes are gone. So we declare in this room, somebody say, I will be one of those. Come on, Adrian Dixon. Come on, God says, I need you. Come on, I will be willing to take the risk. Hallelujah. Come on, it's more than worth it. Hallelujah. Come on, and we worship and we honor him. Come on, righteousness is worth it. Come on, if you allow the enemy, he will have you comparing your process to somebody else's that ain't that ain't clean. Hallelujah. But I'd rather take the less scenic route than to take the route that's full of glamour and it costs me my soul. Come on, but I'm declaring in this hour. Come on, that I I will be one of those that will stand. Come on, righteousness is worth it. Come on, I will not compromise. Come on, I'm not being entrapped into no cult. Come on, come on. You've got to open your eyes and declare it. Come on, you've got to open your mouth and declare, I will be one of those. Come on, the enemy will not wear me out. Come on, it, will, it may take you longer, but you've got to know that on the other side of it, the Father is waiting there for you. He said, I'm, you're in a season. Many of you are in the season of process. He said, but don't let the process wear you out. Don't let the process make you quit. Come on, the process is rigorous. Come on, uh, uh, Apostle Paul said, he said, he said, you must, he said, the process is like going to the gym and working out and allowing yourself to work out. It's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. Come on, it's not enough to come into church and we just shouting, 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 shouting. But you still, but young men are still leaving out, struggling with homosexuality. Y'all not hearing me in the spirit. There's a big play and an agenda of the LGTB community. If we don't wake up and speak, if we don't wake up, the spirit of lawlessness is in the land and it's in our churches. And they're fighting for rights to the place where you cannot say nothing to them. But the Lord said, I want a generation. I want a people that won't quit. He says, I'm in the race with you. I'm in the process with you. He says, I'm partaking in the suffering Chantel with you. Come on, Prophet Jay. I'm in it with you. Come on, I am not outside of it. I am in the process with you. He said, and I'm Mare Kataya. Come on, Karina Roberts. Come on, I am one of the ones that will stand in this end time. Come on, and I'm not looking unto man, but I'm looking unto God, who is the author and the finisher of my faith faith. Hallelujah. We're declaring in this room. Come on, babe. We will not waver. Come on. We will not fall by the wayside. We will not allow the things of life. Come on. We will not allow filthy lucre. Come on. We will not allow the enemy to entrap us into their assignment. 
Come on, but we're declaring in this hour. He says, I'm raising. God has been dealing with me. I sort of, come on. He said, I'm raising you up. He said, I'm raising up a radical generation. Don't, don't, don't try to rush the process of your becoming. Don't try to rush the process of your becoming, but allow the Lord to make you. Allow the Lord to establish you. Somebody declare prayer. Come on, somebody put the link underneath here so that I can have it and tag it at the bottom. Somebody say, allow the Lord to make you. Come on, Anthony. Come on, there are no excuses this year. Come on, allow the Lord to make you. Come on, allow the Lord to develop you. Come on, that's it. My temple will remain clean. For the, your temple, Elder Sharon, your temple, hallelujah. It is the, it is the place for the Holy Spirit, Apostle Belinda. I want to see you this year. You've Some of you have told yourself, I'm not doing another conference. I'm not sewing into another conference. I'm not attending another conference. Lisa Pippen, yes, you will. Come on, tell yourself, I'm going to make it this year to this conference because we are truly going to be crying out the glory of God, the impartation and the pre the atmosphere will be pregnant with manifestation, pregnant with the miracles of Jesus, pregnant with the manifestations of the Lord. Come on and declare it. Come on, allow the Lord to make you. We are living in a generation and I'm going to say this and I'm done. Well, they are trying to push. They are trying to push they are trying to make you become process overnight. Well, they're trying to tell you, pastor now, prophesy now. Run for, no, no, no. Allow God to make you. Y'all don't see my story. It was public. And I'm not done yet. But we declare on this broadcast that we are not, that the Lord has reached. Somebody say, I received my rejuvenation. Say, Lord, rejuvenate me. Rejuvenate me. I want you, I want y'all to make sure that you register this year. Somebody, come on, rejuvenate me. 2022, we're not having a lot of big, we're not having no big names. On the first night, I want to talk about this. My big announcement is we have secured a location for the conference. People are booking people based upon packing the vent. Come on. No, we are getting to the place of God, the purity of the Lord. Allow God to make you. Allow God to birth you out. Allow the presence of God to process you. Even those that are sowing in this moment, we declare over every seed sower, every rejuvenating seed, every seed of impartation, every seed of no lack. We declare over you now that you're, come on, come on. We declare over you now, uh, 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 Prophet Anthony, we're right here. There is a generation of prophets that will war. And then there is a generation of prophets that need to allow themselves to be developed in the process of God. That need to allow themselves. See, the enemy's assignment for the remnant is to make you feel like because you don't see it being done, you're going to try to do it and you're not healed from what you came out of. But declare in this hour, I'm going to let myself be processed. Because a lot of you have left people churches that are full of witchcraft. And though you're not there anymore, you're still practicing their ways of doing things. So we declare a rejuvenation even now in this atmosphere. We declare that we're yielding to the process of the Lord. Somebody declare, rejuvenate me. Come on, somebody declare, Lord, do it again. Hallelujah. Lord, do it again in me. Come on, somebody declare it. Lord, do it again in me. Come on, Amanda Perham. Come on, and your husband, my daughter. Come on, come on, say, Lord, rejuvenate me. Lord, do it over in me. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, declare it to be so. Come on, I will do a new thing. Come on, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come on, the Holy Spirit is here. Holy Spirit says, I'm remaining. 
remaking you. Come on, I'm remodeling you. Come on, I'm refreshing you. Come on, I'm sharpening your tools in your toolbox. He said, and I'm doing it over again. He said, and I'm making you over. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Come on, and it shall spring forth out of you. Come on, and man shall look and say, I thought that they could never rebuild and they will look and see that I've done a great work through you. He said, and in the land where they ashamed you, he said, you shall receive double for your shame. Come on, come on. He said, and where they have shamed you, he said, I will honor you. And where they have told you that you would not prosper, he said, and you will prosper. Come on, we are declaring the sanctioning of the Lord in this atmosphere. Come on, he said, I'm reforming you. I'm remolding you. Come on, I'm resetting you. I'm rejuvenating you. Come on, are katori antaya. Come on, we declare it to be so. He said, Andela basania. A new thing shall spring forth. Hallelujah. He said, A new thing shall spring forth. He said, A new thing shall spring forth. He said, And I'm going to do it over and over again. And you shall drink from me. And you shall drink from me. Me and your well will never run dry. And the besuri and daya, come on, you shall drink from me, and your well will never run dry. Come on, I will prosper you. I'm positioning you. Come on, and I'm calling you blessed. He said, I'm doing it over again. He said, and I'm doing it even in marriages. There are those of you women who have truly been, whoo, there's a whole glory, who have been struggling in the area of loving again. You have been struggling in the area of giving your heart over. And the Lord declares, he said, I'm filtering the men in the kingdom. I'm filtering the men of God and the women of God. He says, and I'm doing a new thing in your heart. I'm doing a new thing in your mind. Sandia. Come on, we come hungry and we come thirsty and we say poor and we come hungry and we come thirsty and we come and we say poor I feel a spirit of worship and we come hungry and we come thirsty and we say poor pour out your spirit and we come hungry and we come thirsty come on Come on, and we come hungry, and we come thirsty. And he says, and they will not be able to seize this well. For this place is called Rehoboth, for the Lord has made room. He said, you have dug many times, and they have seized what I've done, and they have taken credit. He said, but this next thing that I'm doing through you, it will be called, the Lord has made room. Uh, we receive your poor Lord. We receive your poor Lord in Bacassandia. Melian de Lebecuri and the Bahaya. Merecatori and the Lebesuri and Daya. Arema Sondi and the Lebeke. We receive your poor Lord in Tana Mandelebehe. O Cosataya Mandori and Daya. Hey, and we receive your poor Lord. Somebody say, I receive a fresh poor. I receive a fresh rejuvenation. Come on, I receive a fresh renewing. Come on, he said, I'm restoring your wells. I'm restoring what the thieves have taken. I'm restoring what the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. He says, I'm removing the manipulators out of your ear. Nothing will stop people from attending this conference this year. Nothing. Not the lies of what people have said in your ear about Serafina, about this ministry. Nothing will prevent you. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will cripple you. Nothing will block you. Tanisha Green, I declare over you a divine release over your mind. Thank you. Thank you, prophet. And thank you, Apostle Rachel. Come on, I decree it over your mind. I decree it over your spirit. And nothing, somebody declared, nothing will stop the momentum on my life. Hallelujah. Every demonic assignment and agent that has been assigned by hell, we disassign them now and we declare over our bank accounts, we declare over our names that nothing will stop us from doing what God has said. Too many people have missed their blessings.
thing, listening to a lie from another person. Don't let nothing stop you this year, Adriana Dixon. I want to see you and your babies. I want you to come and help plow. Nothing, my Katoria. We thank him for his presence. Nothing, Dr. Susie Smallwood, will, will stop me this year from being where the presence of God will be. And my days of Catherine Coleman, and my days of Wigglesworth, and my days of, even in my days of, of those that have labored. It was not about names. It was about the presence of the Lord. Nothing will stop the momentum on your life. Nothing will stop it. Nothing will stop you. The Lord says, I'm even going in between lies. He said, and I'm breaking them down. Nothing will stop us from the presence of God. He said, I'm bringing peace to your homes, peace to your families, peace, Makatonia. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will stop your business. Nothing will stop nothing that God has given you. Hallelujah. Where his presence is and not where it once was. Let me say that again. He said, be where my presence is and not where it once was. And the Lord said, I'm going to judge many of you that are supporting movements and places that you know the truth and you know what's really going on behind the scenes and you don't tell people the truth. You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged. Nothing will stop us from the presence of God. Nothing will stop us from the presence of God. Nothing will somebody say it. Say it again. That's it. Nothing. The Lord's going to make many people. I want to attend. I need to be there. You need to go register. Let me give these announcements because my team is like, Pastor, don't forget the announcements. Don't make idols. My son is only a preacher. Don't make idols out of movements, but pursue his presence. Do not miss this conference this year. I fought hard not to do it, and I'm doing it because it's not about names, it's about his presence. Y'all go and register. Early bird registration is closed. I don't care what it's going to cost you. Go register. General registration is open. And then VIP is open. And I, y'all know every conference I do, I hate putting VIP. They fought me to do it. But I'm a, I put it on bid this year because I want to do a night of intimacy, of impartation. And we have, a, we have a great vessel of God that will be there on that Thursday. I want to attend. You need to attend, Adriana. I don't want you to just sow. I want you to attend. I want you to be there with your children. You deserve to be refreshed. You deserve to be renewed. You deserve to go back to running for God and those areas. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Somebody say, I deserve it. I deserve to be poor. I deserve it. I literally wrote this morning, come out of your moment and step into your momentum. You deserve it. Wow. I want you to register. The event is in Dallas, Texas. The hotel information will be placed tomorrow. We fought for a reasonable rate. Come on, some of you are stuck on the old movements of God. It's all for a reason. Come on, doctor. Amen. Come on, somebody say, I'm going, I'm pressing my way. Come on, I'm pressing my way. I want you to go register. And VIP, you can do general, but VIP is for Thursday. All access on Thursday. Okay. All right. I'm praying that you get favor. My husband is in it too. I pray you get favor. I want you to. Go and register and reserve your time.
Amen. It's the 17th through the 19th. And on the first day of the conference, we are having an intimate time of impartation. We're ripping these masks off of false prophecy, these things that y'all have carried for years. And we will have at that conference a true, uh, I believe to me, a true general of the Lord that will be there, that will be able to impart, hallelujah, into many of you. We're not joking over people's souls. Then on that Friday, we have Friday night. We It's going to be a night of just worship. Amen. Worship and just laying before the Father and seeking his presence. Come on. And then the last night is Saturday. I will be speaking that night and we'll be having sessions for the children. Wow, but dates are very powerful. Yes. We'll be having sessions for the children. Somebody say our children is a night. 911. Come on, our children are 911. Amen. We're having a session for our children. You need to come on, Tanisha. We're having a session for children. And we want our, there has been a lot of deaths going around with children and different things with the enemy. When it comes to our kids, they're infiltrating the Disney Channel. They're putting uh, the LGTB community is on Sesame Street. Everywhere you go, you are seeing the agenda of hell regarding our children. I want you to bring your children. They are free. Bring your children. Bring them. I don't care if they're teenagers. We're having a session for the children. Teenagers on down. Bring your children so that they can receive. You need to be there, Chantel. Bring your children. Let the children come. God bless you, Apostle Patricia. Go register. Your children are free. Register yourself. It's a 911. Y'all better wake up. If we do not understand, this conference is a 911. It's a 911. It's really not a joke. It's a 911. There is an urgency of intercession in the land like we've never seen. Preachers have gone off the edge. They are no longer preaching about Jesus anymore. They're preaching about who they are. They're getting out of, I, I don't have nothing wrong with great things. But when those things that you have start to become the focus of your message, there is a problem. I want you to register. It's in Dallas, Texas. The link is at the bottom. Go register. Go register by faith. Go and register. We cover our children by the blood of Jesus, but we declare we will. Let me tell y'all something. We got to stop saying we cover them by the blood, but we make no effort to invest in them. Invest in your children. Not a cell phone for Christmas. Not a Broadway show. Invest in your children. Stop leaving your children at home. Stop, stop seeking to be married more than the wholeness of your children. Children are dealing with molestation. There's so much on the news. Parents, people, mothers are becoming burnt out. Jumping off of the of ledge. We can't just keep saying the blood of Jesus. After you plead the blood, you got to do something about it. Get up out of your house. Book your flight. Bring your children. The next generation needs God. Come on. Whatever you have to do, apostle. Come on, Anthony. Come on, gather your people. If you are a pastor with a congregation, you need to gather your people to be refreshed. I am a believer that every leader that is a pastor should gather their people to be refreshed in meetings. Come on. I'm trying to help you. Gather your people, gather your girlfriend. Whatever you desire to do, get there. Get there. And if you've already registered for early bird, you can upgrade your, your stuff. But go and register. We're going to put the hotel. Uh, Apostle Victor, I hope to see you as well. Lulu, it's in. Come on, I hope to see you. I love you all so much. But I decree, I decree the word of the Lord that it is that it is so. We declare that God, hallelujah. 
God is going to do what he said. Come on, I want you to go register. Last night, I just wrote about it and all the seats sold out. I don't care what you have to do. Some of us will borrow to go get liquor. You'll borrow to go buy weed. You'll borrow to go to a concert with Jay-Z and Beyonce. You'll borrow to go down the street. So don't make any excuses about the presence of God. And the worship leader that's coming, it's just prophetic. So I really want you to come. If you desire to volunteer, we need you to text the number. You'll see my some of the leaders are writing it down there. The hotel will be placed when we are done. Tomorrow, we will place the hotel on here. Amen. We love you. Go register. Tell your friend, whoever it may be. God bless you, Katrina Williams. Go register. If you desire to come, let me know. I want you to be there. I love you all so much. Do not miss what God is getting ready to do. Amen. It's something big. Amen. Eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God is getting ready to do. Go register. Go register. I know you're busy, but we must connect with you. Amen. Write me, Nicole Green. Amen. Write me. There is no excuses this year. If you're a pastor, if you're an apostle, whatever it may be, I want you to go and register. Somebody press laugh on that afterpay. But you know what's funny? You'll spend thousands of dollars to wear garments that will rip. You'll get in debt with your credit card. The things that we do just to look good on Instagram, but stuff that benefits your soul, you won't invest. But I declare that we go, we coming and you're going to see more of me. I've been in a time of fasting and prayer. So that's why you haven't seen me on a lot, but you will be seeing me weekly. Amen. Coming live and declaring the word of the Lord. Go register. I love you all so much. Amen. I'm excited about what God's going to do. Tani Felder. I love you. Korea Defon. I want you to register. Get there. Kandisha Kane. Get there. Do what God is saying. And uh, Chantel, I, I really see over you marriage. There is a strong, you're going, there is love for you, woman of God. God is really setting you up this year. There is a strong love. You're going to have the love of your dream that father in the home that you need so shall it be amen in jesus name god bless you all i'll see you y'all register i'll see you next week